right. Thank you very much for that confirmation. Uh, once again, uh, good morning to everyone. May we all kindly mute our mics to allow us to have um, a smooth webinar. May we all mute our mics. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much uh, for setting time aside to join us today for this um, CFD webinar. Sorry, may we all mute our mics? Thank you. Uh, my name is Sandra Minoro and I am from the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange. And it uh, gives me great pleasure to be here today so that I can be able to facilitate uh, this webinar. So perhaps uh, before we proceed any further, we can start with a few housekeeping rules. So um, the first one is to say, may we all ensure that at all times we have our mics muted so that we limit the amount of feedback that comes um, as our presenters are presenting, this also ensures that uh, there's smooth progress in terms of um, in terms of the webinar today. The second one is to say that if at any point during the discussions you've got any pressing questions, please feel free to type those questions into the chat box, and then after the presenter is presented, we will then tackle those questions that will be in the chat box. And then at the end, there will also be an, an opportunity for that those that still have questions uh, that they did not manage to put in the chat box will also allow you to unmute your mics and ask other questions. So uh, today, uh, today it all it gives me great pleasure to say that. Sorry, may we mute our mics? Hello, may you kindly mute your mic? Thank you. So I was saying that today, uh, it gives me great pleasure to say that we're joined by uh, two speakers who are very knowledgeable in the yes. field. We're joined by Johnny Nasa as well as Robert Mayo. So uh, let me start by introducing our first speaker for the day, which is uh, Johnny. So uh, perhaps let me start by thanking Johnny for joining us today and for agreeing to be part of this webinar to come and uh, share more about um, what CFDs are. So Johnny is the head of learning and empowerment at VCG Markets. He's also a chartered financial analyst and a, and a Felbridge alumnus from Kennedy uh, Mellon University. Johnny brings a rich background in finance, specializing in forex trading and market analysis. At VCG Markets, John has, Johnny has played a crucial role in innovative educational programs that incorporate the latest digital tools. This uh, initiative has significantly enhanced trading skills and positioned VCG Markets as a leader in uh, trading education. Known for his ability uh, to clearly engage and present complex financial topics, Johnny has uh, earned respect as a speaker and expert in the finance community. Thank you so much, uh, Johnny, for joining us today. Uh, may you kindly, um, you may take over. Okay, hello. Thank you, Sandra. I'm really All happy right, to be you. here. Uh, I hope we're going to have a great webinar. From my part, I'm going to be explaining what is, what is CFD training, and we're going to take a small journey about what a trading is, and then we're going to dig deeper into what is CFD. Okay, feel free to put questions in the chat, and uh, let me know if you have anything at the end we can discuss. If there's a topic you didn't really understand, we can repeat it. So by that, let us start. So first of all, who heard about trading before? Okay. I know we're a lot here. We have a lot of people, but maybe by raise of hand on teams. Who of you have traded before? You can raise your hand. Okay. I can see a lot of people have traded. That's a great sign. So let's start. Sandra, thank you for the great introduction. So just a little brief again. My name is Jain Nassar. I'm a chartered financial analyst the head of learning and empowerment, and I have more than 10 years of experience in the financial markets, and I'm a Carnegie Mellon alum. 
So what's on the agenda today? First of all, of course, since I'm from VCG Markets, I'm going to introduce to you VCG. What does VCG stand for? What do we do? Then we're going to talk about trading a bit. We're going to talk about contracts for differences and then leverage, margin, some other terminology you see in trading on or on the platform. We're going to take a small example on how to execute a trade, and then we're going to conclude the session. So let's start. What does VCG Market stand for? We are the Vision Capital Group. We are a fintech that provide uh, trading softwares for you and make trading accessible. So what do we do? We rely on three things. You're going to see the rule of three uh, implemented a lot in VCG Markets. We simplify the financial markets them uh, more understandable for people to understand how to trade and how to make money. We are a fintech pioneer. We're always innovating and we have global presence. We are currently present in more than five countries, including the UAE in Dubai, Egypt, Lebanon, Beirut, in Iraq, in Erbil and in Zimbabwe. OK, so what do we aim to do? VCG markets aims to be reliable. Okay. You can rely on us and on our technology to support you and provide you with the best trading infrastructure. We have accessibility where we are providing you access to the financial markets, and we're going to talk about access and how the CFD play a role in providing this accessibility. And at the end, innovation. In VCG markets, one of its, our core values is to always improve ourselves and to innovate and to follow the trend so we can bring our clients the best technologies out there to facilitate their life and to empower them with knowledge. So let's start. Trading. So why, how and what? So why do people trade? Can anyone tell me why do people trade? Any idea? Think about it a bit. Why do we trade? Okay, now that you've thought about it, anyone like would like to share why do we trade? You can just unmute yourself and say it. So, you uh, trade. Hi, John. Uh, the mics have been uh, disabled Muted. to allow okay. for no to just feedback. No worries. Put them in the chat, guys. So, why do we trade? So usually, we trade because we have a need. Okay, there is a need for something, and we need to exchange it for something that we produce. How do we trade? This has developed across time, and we're going to see how the systems develop on how do we on how we trade across times. Currently, we are trading with one another using currencies in the free floating system. What do we trade? It's everything. It can be one kilo of potatoes or one kilo of fish. So I see a dream chaser. We trade to make money. Exactly. The edge against currency fluctuations fluctuations exactly all of that are true but the, at the essence of it i want to think with you imagine you are living in 3000 years ago you live in a small village and that village only produces wheat and now you want to uh, find something to do or you want to try something new to eat you have a need to try fish for example and there's a nearby village that has a lake so you're going to trade with one of them, your wheat for the fish. So this is why we trade. We have to satisfy a need. Now trading has developed. So let's talk about the journey of the development of trading, how trading happened or how it evolved throughout time. So as you see, we have something called the barter trade. At its essence, and then we started using gold. Then we had the gold standard. We standardized the use of gold. Then you went into the Bretton Woods Agreement and then into the free floating system. Quickly, we're going to cover one of these approximately for five minutes. What does barter trade mean? If you can put in the chat, what does barter trade mean? So try to look at the image. Too. So here, if you look, barter trade was me exchanging a good that I have for another good that I need. So going back to the initial example, exactly. So it's exchanging goods without involving money. So if you go back to the initial example we had when we talked about a small village that produces wheat and they want to trade uh, with another village that provide fish. 
So with what they used to do, the access of the weed they have, they train for the access of what the other village has in fish. Do you have problem hearing me? Am I on and off? We can hear you. Okay, so you can hear me. So barter trade. So my excess in wheat that I have in my village, I used to exchange for the excess of fish that the other village have. What was the problem of this? There was no storage of value. So for example, I can reap the wheat, let's say in summer, but I can get fish all along. So what should I do? How can I store value? People started to use something or a medium of exchange and the first thing they thought about was gold, because gold and other precious metal were hard to ex extract, and they were hard to hard to find. So gold became the currency. So people would go, I'd sell my wheat, I'd receive the value in it in gold, and then I can choose what to decide or when to buy uh, the fish from the other village or anything else. And this allowed this storage of value and this medium of exchange allowed us as civilization to grow because it facilitated trade and we became more efficient. So as empires grew and as the village became larger and larger, we got empires. And at, on the 18th century, we had one of the uh, largest empires in history. Anyone know what was the largest empire in history in the 18th century? If you can put it in the chat. So the largest empire in history or in, during that time was the British Empire. Okay, Greece was in before the before, uh, Common Era. In the 18th century and the 19th century, Britain was the dominant power in the world, and they came up with a standardization where they said, we don't have to transfer gold from one area to another. This is so inefficient and takes a lot of space. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put all the gold in our central bank, and we're gonna print a paper that says, I owe the person X, X amount of gold. So I owe Johnny, if I have 10 ounces of gold at the Central Bank of England or the Bank of England, I put those 10 ounces and the Bank of England issues a paper that says I own 10 ounces of gold. So I use this paper to go and trade with other people. And this is where the invention of paper money became a prevalent, okay? And countries or empires used to settle these paper and the end they transfer gold once in a lifetime. What happened to that system? After World War I and World War II, we all know that Britain declined in power and the US became the dominant power in the world. So of course, they're gonna impose their system on the world. We went into the Bretton Woods system. Bretton Woods is a small country or a small village uh, inside the United States. And the US basically told the world in order to exchange dollars, in order to exchange for the gold, you have to pass through the dollar. And that system faced uh, a collapse when the economy hit a stagflation in the early, early 1970s. And then the gold was liberated or the dollar was no more packed to the gold. And now we have the free floating system where each currency is floating towards one another. So current, currently, if I want to trade uh, with, with, let's say, the European Union, I would need to exchange the local currency that I have. That I have. Well, for example, if I use the US dollar, exchange into euro in order to facilitate trade and be able to buy things from the European Union. The free floating system provides us with a lot of opportunities too. It allowed us to invest and trade on the international level and access international markets. And it's also provided us a way to make money out of predicting how the economies are gonna perform. This is something we call fundamental analysis in trading. Okay? And we also have technical analysis, but these are outside the subject today. So that free floating system and the markets being open to one another. And for me, I can trade if I'm here sitting in Lebanon, especially with digitization, I can trade on the US stocks, okay? But there was one issue. I need access to markets. How can I trade on the international markets? Because I know stocks are listed on the New York Stock Exchange, for example, or I need to access currencies, but I don't have a platform to do that. So how can I access the international markets? This is where CFD is coming to play. So I have two options. I can go either register in the New York Stock Exchange, buy a share, which is I buy the shares directly, and I'm listed there and I pay a lot of taxes and a lot of operational costs. 
Or I can use something called CFDs, which is what we provide. And the CFDs, as you're gonna see, facilitates the transaction of money okay, between the two and facilitate trading for you guys. Okay? So what CFD is doing, in a nutshell, it is providing us with access to the international markets from where we are currently. Because usually, if you are not a citizen of that currency, of that country, you cannot trade its shares or it becomes very difficult to trade its shares. So how can you trade on them? We created a product called CFDs. So what does CFD stand for? It stands for contracts for differences. <clears throat> so before we start it, if I say contract for differences, what does that tell you? If you can put me put it in the chat, please let put it, write something. What does a contract for difference tell you or what can you understand from the name? Anyone? Can you put it in the chat, please? Contract for difference. So first of all, what do I have? I have a contract, yes? So the contract of difference, basically, it's gonna be a contractual agreement between two parties, okay? What are we gonna say? We're gonna say, look, uh, Let's take an example. Apple stock is at 100, and we're going to see that example. I want to trade on the price. I see Apple going up. So instead of me going buying the Apple share and sitting on it and waiting for the price to go up and then selling it, the contract for difference is telling you between you and me, if you see the price of Apple going down and I see the price of Apple going up, we say, hey, we don't need to own the underlying asset. So no ownership of the asset. We can just trade on the price or trade on the price differences. So if, if I see Apple going up and you see Apple going down, and I say, look, let's make a deal. Let's may sign a contract. If Apple goes up, you pay me. If Apple goes down, I pay you. Okay. So again, it's a contractual agreement. So any contract is enforceable by law. So we have to enforce it. I'm actually not owning the Apple stock, so no ownership of assets. Two or three, I'm taking long and short positions. So what does long and short positions? Long means I can buy, short means I can sell. And the most important thing here is short positions because the person that is selling Apple or the person that is predicting that the price of Apple is gonna go down, they are actually taking a short position on the Apple stock. So without owning the underlying asset, I can say, hey, I've heard some bad news about Apple and their price is gonna go down. So I wanna sell Apple. In real life, if I don't own Apple, I cannot sell it. But with CFDs, since I'm trading on the price movements, I can say the price is gonna go up, down and another person says the price is gonna go up. We enter into that contract and we can execute the trade. If the price actually do go down, I'll be making money, okay? And, one, and the final, if you want, characteristic of a CFD, or what is a CFD? The final definition of the CFD, CFDs, it is that it allows us to use leverage positions. And we're gonna discuss this in, in details. So one thing I want you to think about when you think about contracts for difference or CFD trading is that you are trading on price movement. Let this be imprinted into your head that contracts for differences we are trading on price movements. We don't actually own the underlying stock, but if we see the prices are gonna go up, so we're gonna buy a contract. If we see the prices are gonna go down, we sell a contract, okay? So we are trading on the price movement. <clears throat> How can we trade on the price movement and why to choose CFDs? Because CFDs are providing us with the accessibility and the flexibility. Again, when I talk about accessibility, Imagine you sitting in Harare right now. You want to go and open a bank account. And then after that bank account, you have to open a bank account in the United States and get registered and go through the legal procedures in the United States for you to be able to purchase an Apple stock. Is that uh, accessible for you? Maybe, but it's too much work. Whereas with CFDs, I can open my application right now. I can have my phone. 
I open an account with a broker such as VS VCG, and I say, hey, the price of Apple is going to go up. I'll buy a contract of CFDN. I, I trade the price movement and the prices are going to go up. If they actually go up, I'll make money. If they actually go down, I lose money because there is another front where we are settling the operation. Flexibility, because you can go, you can buy and sell. So it is flexible. It's the ease of execution, as we've mentioned. It's very easy to execute. It's just one finger or finger tap away, where you can tap on the buy or you can tap on the sell and you can execute the trade without going the hassle of being registered on the New York Stock Exchange and, and all of those legal procedures. Okay. So once you are onboarded in VCG, for example, and we do the KYC, which is know your client, and we check everything, you are ready to trade on the international markets using the CFDs. And it, the, the CFDs are present on a diverse asset class. What do we mean by a diverse asset class? Is that you can trade stocks, indices, currencies, futures, cryptocurrencies, all of these, they have contracts for differences that you can trade on. So we are providing you, this is part of simplifying the financial markets, where we are providing you the opportunity to access those markets through CFDs. And again, as you can see here, we have leverage positions. So let's discuss what is leverage. Well, what, what, how do you define leverage before we look into the definition that I've provided? What is leverage for you? Anyone? Leverage is debt. Okay. Why is it debt? Alan, why is it debt? Okay, so we received in the in the chat that leverage is debt. To a certain degree, it is. So it is a debt from the broker. Okay, so what do leverage do? It allows us allows traders to control larger positions with a smaller amount of money. Okay, so for example, if I have one hundred dollars and I use a leverage of one to one, one to ten, okay, I can now trade as if I have. $1,000, and we're going to see an example. We're going to see where leverage can be used to enhance your position or make you uh, make better returns, or where can leverage be detrimental or something that is bad for you when you don't do the risk management, okay? So it's some way you are taking that from the broker, and we're going to see how the broker protects themselves from the debt they give you because it's actually not a debt. Because if you think about it, if I'm a broker and I give you debt, I want my money back, yes? If you lose my money, how would I get it back? So how do broker work? We're going to see that. This is something we're going to cover in margin. And at the end, leverage provides you with the opportunity to have a, vari a variety of trading tactics. So if you look back at the beginning, we see a lot of people like Dream Chaser and Tatenda, they said that they trade to make money. So these are speculative or you're speculating on the market and CFD allows you to do that, especially on the short term. And it also allows you to hedge against currency fluctuation. Okay? So you can use it for hedging, trading, speculation, and all of that. So it allows us a diverse and a variety of trading tactics to be allowed. Okay? So my strategy is to trade. How should I trade? I can trade by speculating on the price movement, or I can trade by hedging my positions. Let's take an example to understand more leverage. Let's say I have an equity or my capital, an equity of $1,000, and I decide to have a leverage of 1 to 10. Okay? And I want to buy Tesla, the stock of Tesla, and currently, the stock of Tesla is at $100, okay? And I say to myself, look, if I make 20% on Tesla, or I make a return of 20% of my capital on my equity, 
I would be great in a great position and I want to close the position. I want to get out of it. I want to sell it if I make my 20%. But also because I understand risk management and I understand that the prices might move in a way that I don't like, I say I'm going to also limit my losses to 10%. Okay. And here when I talk about 20%, it's of my equity. So what is 20% of $1,000? Okay, can you put it in the chat? What is 20% of, of my equity? Okay. So exactly, and it's 200. And what is 10%? It's 100. So what I should I do? Again, I have an equity of $1,000. The leverage is 1 to 10. Okay? And the Tesla price is 100. I know that I want to make 20% and I don't want to lose more than 10% of my equity. Then what should I do? First, using leverage, my total capital, okay, so I have equity and I have capital. My total equity was $1,000, but now my total capital is how much? is this $1,000 that I have as equity. And since I'm using one to 10, so every dollar that I have is equivalent to $10. So I multiply my $1,000 by 10, and now my capital is $10,000. So now I can trade as if I have $10,000, okay? Now that I have those $10,000, I want to enter and buy Tesla. I want to, Put my take profit and stop loss. So do you know what is a take profit and stop loss? You can put it in the chat. I'll give you two minutes. What is a stop loss? A stop loss is when I want to put an order. So in the market, there's multiple type of orders. I can put a market order where I execute directly in the market, or I put a limit order where I specify certain prices where I want the operations to be executed or to happen, okay? So now, since I'm trading as if I have $10,000, okay, so I get received, how do you come up with that leverage ratio? You decide how, how the amount of leverage do you have, how much leverage you wanna use, VFX have, have put a limit, I think one to 100. Robert can touch on that. Uh, so you can maximum use one to 100. So your $1 would be equivalent to $100. Or in our case, it would be equivalent to $1,000, $100,000 if you multiply it by 100. But I decided to use the one to 10. So I want my $1,000 to be equivalent to $10,000. So now I decide. If we remember that price of Tesla was $100, yes? So what is 20% of $100 is 120. What is 10% of $100? It's 10. So if I wanna win, okay, 20%, okay, sure, payment. So leverage is when I have an amount or oh, I have equity, and I want to trade with an amount that is larger than my equity, I use leverage. So to simplify it, Helen mentioned that it was debt. It's some sort of a way where we give you money to trade, but this money is ours. You can just use it to magnify your capital, okay? And we're going to see. It allows you to make much more profit with smaller equity, but it also allows you to lose more money with us with a smaller equity. So if I'm trading without leverage, let's say I'm trading as if I have $1,000 and I want to make 20%, I'll make my 20% when the stock price of Tesla goes to 120 and I lose 10% when the stock price of Tesla goes to 90. Correct? Am I saying something that is not correct? Okay, so in normal cases, let's put leverage aside. I'm trading or I'm buying directly from the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, I have $1,000. I want to go and buy Tesla stock at 100. Okay, and then I want to make 20% of my money and I don't want to lose more than 10%. Okay, 
to make 20% on, on my money, the price of Tesla should go by 20%. So if it's at 100, it should go up to 120. And then I'll make my 20%. But if the price of EFTA goes down, I don't want to lose more than 10%. So 10% out of 500 is 10. So I don't want any time the price is at $90, I want to sell. But now that we're using leverage, okay, and we're te trading as if it is 10 times our equity, I need to consider something. Look, I'm trading as if I have $10,000, okay, but my initial investment is $1,000. And everything I do when I want to trade is think about my equity. Okay. Yes, I have a capital that is worth $10,000, but I need to remember that my equity is $1,000. So how should I put my trade? Yes, I want to trade as if I have $10,000. I'll buy <coughs> 10 times more Tesla shares to make my 20% in a faster manner, but I'll put myself at risk. So instead of putting 20% stop loss that it's 20% higher than the price and the uh, take profit that is 20% higher than the current price, which is at 100, and the stop loss that is lower than 100. So take profit from its name is where I want to make my profit and generate my income, to take my income, to take my revenue. Stop loss is where I put an order where I tell the market that at this level or at that price, I don't want to have Apple stock anymore because it's going down and it might go down further than 90. So here, how should I think about it? I'll take into consideration, look, I multiplied my money times 10. Okay, so a 20% move is too much for me. Yeah, I don't want to lose that much. So effectively, what is $200? OK, so I said I want to make $200, which is 20% of my equity. So what is $200 out of 10,000? It's 2%. So I put my take profit for the price should be at the price where it is at $100, $102, and my stop loss is at 99. So here, if you can notice something, something, what does that tell us about the market? OK, what does that tell us about the market? Is that, hey, uh, I can make my $200 by a movement of $2, or I can lose $100 by a movement of $1. Isn't it a huge difference between $120 and $90? Yeah, there is a huge difference. So again, anyone has a question on how we calculated how I should my should I put my take profit, which is at $102, and my stop loss at $99? So I take. So let's go back one step. Going back to this, I have my equity that is $1,000. I want to make 20% on it, which is $200. I don't want to lose more than 10%, which is $100. Okay? So this is my equity. This is what I have. The $9,000 that I'm trading outside of this, this is owned by the broker. I don't have it. I cannot withdraw it. If I lose my $1,000, I, lo I lose all of my money. Okay. Now that I'm trading using leverage with the times 10, which is 1 to 10, I have $10,000. I want to trade on the Tesla stock. I buy it. Instead of putting it at 120 and waiting for the price to go up by $20, I can say if I see the price is going to go up by $2, I can make this strategy happen. I can make my profit of $200. So 200 out of 10,000 is 2%. So I need the price to go up by 2% in order to make my return. Okay, so I made my $200. Let's say the price of Tesla actually go up to 102 and I sell at 102. So I bought at 100, sold at 102, but I sold as if I have 10,000. So I bought more shares. So I made my $200. So now, as you see, without leverage, okay, I made more income with a shorter amount, a shorter amount of, uh, or a shorter movement, or a smaller movement in price with a shorter period, because we know markets fluctuate. So this is the power of leverage. So without leverage, a $2 increase in the stock price 
results in 2% return on income or return on investment. With leverage, the same $2 increase in the stock price resulted in a 20% return on investment on the actual equity that is used, which is my $1,000 that I have. So when using leverage, I need to think of in terms of return on my investment. Investment is my equity. Investment is the money that I take out of my pocket and I put it into my account. This, you have to protect it at all times. So you need to understand that everything I do is to protect my equity. I don't want to lose my money. Okay, so how can I protect it? We need to think in terms of risk management. Because although leverage allows us to make returns, it also has a lot of risks. So without leverage, a $2 decrease in the stock price result in a 2% loss relative to, to the initial equity. Okay, but in our case here, it was a $1 decrease would have resulted in 1%, which is a dollar if we bought it directly and we're not using CFD. But the same $1 decrease or $2 decrease in the stock price would result in a 20% loss relative to the initial equity. Okay. So you need to think in terms of risk management. Before going forward, please let me know in the chat if you have any questions or anything is unclear. Okay, Because now we're going to shift towards something called margin. Okay, so before we close the chapter of leverage, let me know if something is unclear or you need me to repeat anything. <coughs> okay, thank you, Freeman. Okay, clear, no questions. So what is margin now? Okay. Margin. We need to think about one thing, margin and leverage. They provide us with the same thing. We are trading with an amount, but we're getting a larger amount or a larger exposure. Margin is heavily used as a terminology in trading. It's amount of money required to open and maintaining a trading position. So if I wanna buy, okay, $10,000 worth of stock, okay, and the margin is 20%, I only need to put in $2,000, okay? So if I wanna reflect that into leverage, and I say, hey, I have $2,000, but I want to trade as if I have $10,000, what would my leverage be? Can anyone put it in the chat, please? So if I have, let's say I have an equity, going back to leverage, if I have an equity of $2,000 and I want to trade as if it is $10,000, what would be my leverage? My leverage would be one to five because $2,000 times five give me $10,000. But here we're using different terminology, exactly. So we're using different terminology and I say, hey, I want to trade or I want to buy 100 stock of Tesla, if the stock of Tesla is at $100 times 100 equals $10,000, but I only have a margin of 2,000 or I only have equity of $2,000. So I'd look for a margin that is 20% where I'm required only to put 20% of the amount that I want to invest in. Okay, so I'm putting a smaller amount to trade on an amount that is larger than it. So here I'm putting $2,000 to trade as if it is $10,000. So here we can see margin and leverage. They might be confusing. Both of them are allowing us to trade on larger amounts, but they differ a bit in the technical terms. And we're gonna see how they differ. So margin, what are the benefits of margin? When you want to participate in trading that don't have the full capital to cover the position, so I see that, okay, I have X amount of, of uh, capital. I want to use it to, uh, <clears throat> to trade on it. How can I do that? I look for the margin requirements. Okay? Plus margin allow us to open position in various financial markets. Because, hey, if I have a 20% margin, I can open position with my $2,000. I can open multiple positions at multiple financial markets. 
and diversify my investment. So what is diversification? If I want you to remember a term going out of here, the most important thing to remember when you're doing trading and you're doing risk management is to diversify your investment. What does that mean? Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. In simpler terms, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Anyone know why we say don't put all of your eggs in one basket? <clears throat> Too much risk, exactly. Why? Because if I'm walking and I'm holding a basket of eggs and I fall, all of my eggs will be broken and I would lose all of my food. So to diversify, I put some eggs in the basket, some in the backpack, one in my pocket, one in my hand. So this way I'm diversifying the risk. If the back basket falls, I lose the eggs in it, but I might make income in other manners. So margin allows us to diversify. Leverage is when I want to maximize my exposure to price movement. So I know that the price is going to move, that is going to move very narrowly. It's going to go to 105, the Tesla stock, and maximum down to 95. Here, I can use the leverage to achieve the return objective that I set, which is was, which is what, which it was 20% uh, or to protect my capital. I also do risk management at 10%. It's very common in speculative trading and short-term strategy and day trading. So these are the variety of tactics that we talked about. If I'm trading on daily basis, okay, I open and close positions daily. So I don't keep positions overnight. And this is something too important. Using leverage, you're gonna be charged swap rates. So it's not really something that is good. You might receive swap rates, which is interest, or you might pay swap rates. To avoid all of that, day traders, what do they do? They use leverage, so they maximize. They have a small amount of equity. They know the prices move up and down. They maximize that movement, so they take full advantage of the price movements to make more money in a day trading because they don't want the positions to be still open or to hold those prices for the other day. Okay? And something to consider, high leverage increases the risk, so you need to use it wisely. Okay? So now we've covered a bit of margin. Now we've covered a bit of leverage. It's now to consider something called margin level. So the margin level is basically the equity that I have and the margin that I used. And we're going to see a live ex example. This metric, okay, is really important to figure out when you're trading, where is your current position? If your margin level is very low, that means that you are in a very risky position and you might lose all of your money. So you need to keep your margin level high. Okay? It's expressed in percentage value, okay? And it tells us how much money do I have for new trades, okay? So it's, so it's like your heartbeat, okay? If you have a healthy heartbeat, your body is healthy. So if you have a healthy margin level, then your account and your trading performance is very healthy. How do we calculate it? This is the formula. It's equity over used margin times 100. We're going to see a live example on this. And let's take an example. So suppose you have a trading account with a balance of $5,000. Okay. We're going to cover margin call. Of course, we're going to cover margin call. Okay. So you open a position that requires a 100, a 1,000 margin. Okay. So what is my equity? What is my balance right now? It's $5,000. How much am I going to use of it? I'm going to use 1000 as a margin, OK? And then the price goes up to 200, OK? And I have unrealized profit. Why is it unrealized? Because I'm still holding the position. I didn't sell. I'm still keeping it. I didn't realize the gain. I don't have the money in my hand. The position is still in the market. So I'm now making $200 on my 1000 investment. So my equity or my balance will be 5,200, it's moving, okay? So my margin level would be how much? It's the $5,000 okay, plus the unrealized, which is 200, divided by the margin that I use, which is 1,000. Why? Because at the end, I'm gonna receive a margin call. Hey man, uh, I gave you a margin, okay? 
you have to come and pay it. If you don't have the $1,000 in your account, I'm losing money because I'm giving you margin. So you have to pay it. So how many times can I how many times can I cover the margin? It's 520 times. So I can cover it around five times. Okay. So this is what we're saying here. This margin level indicates that your equity covers the used margin by 520%. So this is providing me a buffer or a safety net before I receive a margin call if I incur losses. So now the question asks, what if I lost the position? Okay, I put a margin of 100, okay, and I'm trading 5,000, and then I'm losing money. I'll receive something called margin call. What is a margin call? A margin call is very something that is very important that brokerage firms do. You receive a margin, margin call to increase the funds in your account if you are needing liquidation. It's a point where we close your account. So if you're losing, you only have 30% of your margin left. So from the $1,000, if you go down to $300 left as a margin or margin level, you're gonna be liquidated. So we at VCG would give you a call. Usually nowadays, it's a notification on your mobile or trading platform, but Previously, or in, in the 19, early 1900s, because trust stock trading and margin trading and all of that, they used to actually pick up the phone and call the investor, hey, you're losing money, you need to put more money. So this is the margin call. This is where it comes from, okay? So the margin falls below the broker's certain level. At VCG market, it's 80%. So if your margin level is at 80%, you're gonna receive a margin call, hey, you need to put more money. And if your margin falls below 30%, all of your positions, not only the position you're currently holding. So if you have here multiple positions that you're holding, all of your positions would be closed. You'd get something called liquidated. Okay, it's a liquidation. So you're gonna take whatever money you have left and you're gonna uh, have them as liquid cash because right now you're too much of a risk your losses, because you're using margin and leverage, if you lose too much, the brokers are gonna lose. So this is how brokers protect themselves is by having a margin level where below a certain threshold, we close your positions because if you continue losing, you're gonna lose the money that we are giving you or we're giving you as debt. So is it clear how we protect ourselves as VCG and how you can make money using leverage and margin, okay? So again, a margin call is a friendly call. It's your friend calling you, hey man, you either need to add your positions, take an inverse position, or you need to put more money into your account. Or if you are losing money, maybe close your positions now if the prices are not gonna go up again or go down based on your positions and your trading pattern. Usually the third option is not really used. You either increase the money because you wanna protect your portfolio, or you just hedge it, you take inverse positions where you keep your margin level stuck at a certain position. So what does that mean? If I sold the Tesla stock and I'm losing money, how do I hedge it? I buy Tesla stocks. So now my position is froze. If it goes up or go down, I'm either losing or uh, losing or making money. But because a long term, I see the Tesla stock falling, for now I can hedge my position. Okay. Other terminology that we're gonna use and we're gonna see in the example, we're gonna talk about something called balance and equity. So balance is the amount deposited plus or minus the realized profit or loss. So realized profit or loss is when I actually close the position and then put my money in my pocket. Equity is the balance plus floating profit and loss. Okay. Anything that's unrealized is shown in my equity because this is my equity. Margin, as I told you, this is the amount of leverage that you're using or the amount of money you are putting to open position at the larger, I mean, the larger amount. And the free margin is what equity miners margin held on open trades. It is what you can actually withdraw from your account right now. If it's below zero, the system will not allow you to place orders. Okay, so you're, that means you're losing money. You cannot withdraw more money and we need to protect you or we're gonna, uh, <clears throat> you're gonna be liquidated soon. So let's take a quick example in the real world to understand how do, does these things work. Let me open the trading platform real quick.
Any questions for now? So this is a trading platform. Okay, that's as a demo account. We can have fun as much as we want. So what do we see? We have a balance. So what does balance stand for? Balance is everything we have plus realized or loss. Equity is the money that I currently have. So my equity, if I'm making money, it's going to be shown plus, even though I don't have them. If I'm losing money, it's going to be less than 10,000. And this is my free margin, which is I can the amount I can withdraw. So if I came and put $10,000 before trading anything, <coughs> and I have a balance of 10,000, then my equity is going to be 10,000, and my fee margin is going to be 10,000. Now let's say I see that the euro USD is going to go down. Okay, the euro is going to get weaker. So I want to sell the euro. What do I do? Okay, I go into the euro. Let me show it like that. So here are the symbols. So this is where I put the order. Instant execution is I'm executing at the market. Pending order is the take profit and stop loss we talked about. Okay, so let's take instant execution. And this is the volume. So let's say. Yes, so you do not receive dividends. Okay, unless you are trading on a different type of uh, platform or a different type of operational transaction where you can actually you're owning the share or we own the share in your name where you can receive dividends. OK, so no, if you're trading on the price movement, you don't receive dividends. OK, that's a question in the chat. So the volume, let's say I want to trade as if I have 1000 euro. OK, and I want to sell. I want to put a stop loss. I can put it right here. I want to put a take profit. I can put it right here. But does I just so so directly you see I started with a loss where is this? Where is this loss coming from? Does anyone have any idea? This loss is coming from the spread, which is the commission brokers use to make money and the commission we charge you. OK, since this is a demo account, there is no commission. So it's only low, you're losing it on the spread because if I sell at this price, I need to buy at this price and there's a difference in prices. This is what we call the spread. So as you can see right here, since I'm making zero dollar, the price is right at it. And my balance and equity are still similar. The margin is a 10, my free margin, I can actually withdraw how much. So I'm using 10.74 to open that account. What does that mean? Okay, so this $1,000, I need to put just only ten dollars to trade on it, approximately ten dollars. So this is my margin that I always need to keep for me to be able to keep this position. My margin level is how many times I can cover my margin. I can cover it around ten thousand times, which is the percentage that you're seeing here. Now I can diversify my position. I think you can take any orders, and I'm just gonna go and have a little bit of fun with this. So you can see everything is changing. I might be losing money. I may be uh, making money on some trade. At the end, this is the summary and this is how everything works out. OK, so now I can also make here. I can take 0 0.1, which is a higher volume, and I say I want to buy. So this will affect my position at a faster rate. Why? Because I'm using larger leverage. OK, so you see my margin jumped. Do we have any questions for now? If not, I'm just going to recap real quick what we took and let me know if you have any additional questions. Okay. So this is what you're going to see when you open a trading account or a demo account with us. So where you can go and practice and just click and enjoy or test your investment strategy and get used to the leverage and margin terminology, which is are provided by the CFD. So before we close, let me again. Sorry for this. Let me reshare my screen with the PowerPoint. So to conclude, just remember, okay, there's VCG markets. Remember, why do we trade? How do we trade and what do we trade? Okay, how trading became, uh, or 
became what we know today as something that we can exchange uh, freely, where it wasn't like that, and money is uh, used for medium of, uh, medium of exchange and storage of value, we need to access the market. In order to access the market in countries that do not have uh, really, uh, if you want, uh, they're not really developed, such as Lebanon, Okay, we need to access these markets. We use CFDs and we use, can use leverage positions. So remember, CFDs are a contractual agreement. You don't own the asset. You can take, you can buy and sell them long and short. Okay, you're trading on the price movement. It provides us ease of execution, accessibility and flexibility. It's available on multiple uh, asset classes, stocks, and this is currencies, cryptocurrencies. We talked about leverage and how leverage can enhance or increase the amount of money we're trading with and the risk there is included in leverage. We talked the differences between margin and, and leverage. They are a bit different. The concept is the same, but margin is the amount we set. And when we look at the trading platform, we see the margin. So what is a margin call? Is when you receive a call to put more money into your account because you might be losing. And liquidation is when all of your positions. So if I look back at the trading, if my uh, margin is below a certain level. If my pre margin is below a certain level, all of these positions, whether I'm winning money in these positions, I'm going to get liquidated and all of these positions, positions are going to get closed. And at the end, we figured out some terminologies as we can see in front of us. So what is free margin? Free margin is the amount that you can actually take out right now. So right now, if this is your position, okay, Freeman, you do have a balance of 10,000 because you don't have any realized loss or profit. Your equity is 10,000, but you have put them aside to open all of these positions. You're actually using $150 of the $10,000 that you have. So in order to keep these positions open, you need to keep that $150.64 open. Of course, you want to leave more because any change in price might require you to include more margin. Okay, so the free margin right now, you can withdraw. Technically, you can withdraw $9,850, okay? You can enter into contract and what are the minimum amounts? There's no minimum time, okay? When you're using leverage or CFDs, you might be charged or receive swap rates. So you don't have a minimum time, but the longer you hold your positions, you're exposed or you can get charge with interest rates or you can receive interest rates. There is no minimum uh, amount where you can hold a contract. You can hold it for forever if you want. Theoretically, you can hold it forever. And the minimum amount, uh, this is to be reported with the sales team in, in Harare, where we can take as low, I think, as 50 or $100 in ECG Markets uh, Harare office. Okay. And for the list of requirement documents, you need a proof of residency, uh, proof of uh, identity, and uh, I think the sales, the sales team can help you more. We have um, an event on Monday, if you can attend that at Crystal Lodge, that would be perfect. Okay, But a proof of residency, proof of balance, and an identity or a passport with a validity that is, or it's not expired with still validity in it, these are the three things that you need, and you need to fill a form, uh, which is a KYC for you to open an account. Okay. Any other questions? These are the requirements for you to open an account with us. Okay. Any other questions do you have? Do you have any other questions? Not. Thank you so much. Thank you for the interaction and for being active in the group. Okay. Okay, for additional information, I'm going to share my email right now. Please, you can send me a, an email whenever you want for further details. And I can connect you to the offices of uh, our, in our office in Harare. Okay, what is the impact of AI on trading? Uh, Zadila, that's a very huge topic. We can have a different webinar on how we can use AI in trading. Uh, currently, it can provide you with updates, it can write you a lot of algorithm you can use to trade, but it's not directly linked to it. There's a lot of algorithms that are out there, especially with the big banks, that monitor and analyze the markets. Okay. 
So are you gonna get the slides? I need to discuss it, but I don't mind sharing them again. And if you want the slides, please pass by our office, VCG Markets Harare. I'll share the details with you and the exact location of the office and the numbers that you can reach out to us uh, in the chat in a bit, okay? Turnaround time for opening an account with you. Um, I think can only take, uh, if you have provide the legal documents and everything is set, we can open an account for you in like five minutes maximum, pending that all of your documents are correct and legal. Okay, any other questions? There's no more questions. Sandra, I'll give it back to you. And thank you so much. All right, uh, thank you so much, uh, Johnny, for that presentation. I think we can all agree that um, it was very educative. It was very interactive. Thank you so much, Johnny, for setting time aside to come and um, engage uh, the audience. So perhaps you can just hold on and uh, not log off yet. Perhaps uh, the audience has one or two questions that they are sure. still um, thinking about. So if you still have uh, questions for Definitely. Johnny, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Uh, you will be around until the end of the webinar so that you can be able to address any other questions that might come up along the way. So uh, right now, without wasting much of your time, um, allow me to introduce our second speaker of the day, who is uh, Robert Mbaiwa. So Robert holds a BSc in Applied Accounting from Oxford Brookes University, UK, and is a fellow of the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and Public Accountants, and a member of the Auditors Board of Zimbabwe, and he has over 15 years in capital markets and insurance. Robert joined ZSC as a trading manager in May 2008. Robert was instrumental in the automation of the ZSC, ZSC surveillance uh, of listed companies on the ZSC. Prior to joining ZSC, he was an account executive at Marsh Insurance Brokers Zimbabwe and uh, Capital Insurance Brokers. He was responsible for the underwriting of short-term insurance business and claims management and accounting. Robert, thank you so much for coming. Please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sandra. If you can allow me to share my presentation. Um, Confirm, can you see my presentation? Hmm? No, we cannot see it yet, Robert. No, it's not. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I think um, Robert might be facing a few technical uh, challenges on his mission. So he will be presenting from this end. Apologies um, for the late start, uh, but I'll take you through um, the what we do from a VFX the role that we play. 
um, in terms of uh, these CFDs. Um, I think John has touched a, a lot of them um, in terms of what they do, what we come in to do just to do a complementary role. Um, he has also indicated, I think, what CFDs are all about. And uh, just, I'll just run through, mine is going to be very short. And by way of definition, in terms of how this is defined in terms of our um, uh, Securities Act, it is defined as a financial contract that pays the difference in the settlement price between the open and closing of trades, and uh, these are case settled transactions. Um, these securities don't need uh, the existence of the underlying asset, because you just be paying uh, the closing price. Um, and you can have these instruments based on uh, equities, indices, commodities, and currencies. And, 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 and most, I think in most markets, uh, is popularly referred to uh, as, as forex trading. Uh, so um, currently, uh, VCG is the licensed broker who are licensed to offer CFDs in Zimbabwe, and the VFX provides a regulatory power in terms of uh, this product. Um, and the security exchange rules have been approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And if one, anyone needs a copy, they will be available for anyone to to just uh, have a look. And 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 uh, obviously, we always encourage people to deal with uh, licensed brokers. Um, so why we regulate F uh, CFDs? Um, I, I think all of us have read a recent article relating to uh, because it's public knowledge. Perhaps I'm gonna share the information. Uh, Dr. Kuramatunu, I think the matters before the courts, he lost about 100,000 through um, one of the people he has entrusted to uh, help and give advice in, in terms of CFDs. So it is important that investors have to be protected in a way uh, that makes sure that people don't get advantage uh, of the local investors. Um, and obviously, from where we stand, the list of foreign currency um through this um uh, outflows through zimbabwe is obviously a major concern especially from uh, other regulatory parties and we provide a secure platform because um the vcg that you see uh, have been registered with uh, the securities and exchange commission they are also licensed by the vfex and uh, it brings transparency in terms of how they operate um so we do uh, look at provide we are there to provide an oversight in terms of the trading and settlement of those trades and obviously if there are any challenges which are encountered along the process you are also to investigate and to make sure that corrective action is taken i think the fact that you have one member prepared to um, avail themselves to scrutiny and making sure that they comply with the regulations is a key component of what we do and um, all we are trying to do um, in terms of the CFD is to provide the developments for the capital markets and also trying to deepen the capital markets. We also believe it is an important part to uh, increase the diversity of our investors um, from uh, increase the retail base. If you look at to the domination which has been on our market, it has likely been institutional investors. So this product, because it's more appealing to young people, um, it is a platform where we can also increase uh, participation by retail investors. So what we do, um, so we come up with um, the framework that helps in terms of developing uh, the CFDs, and we have to look at it in terms of reviewing this um, uh, these rules time and again to see whether there are any changes that have come into the market where there are any loopholes that needs to be closed as a result of this. And, and we then do license um, the CFD applicants and other participants who want to participate in the value chain. Um, and, and obviously, one of the things mandate is to ensure that we enforce a settlement obligation for participants. And uh, like every market, you when people are licensed, they need to comply with the regulations. What Johnny was talking about in terms of margining and, and everything, all those things will be uh, looked at from our perspective. And if you look at the rules, um, those are some of the issues that we have to monitor whether the participants are complying with those with those regulations.
So in terms of um, the CFDs, obviously there are various um, CFDs that can be brought to the market. Uh, you can look at those which are not listed on VFX. Uh, people can also try to look at instruments which are listed on VFX. Um, and, and popularly known, I think in this market, there's the current space, which is basically the forex trading. And you can also have indices. And there are certain criteria which are put in place. And this criteria, if uh, like it's a listed instrument, you are looking at um, an average market cap of 3 million uh, with at least three months or, or 5 million if it has been trading for less than three months. So you're looking at instruments that people are aware that are listed, uh, if it's a listed. Uh, so if it's an unlisted, you have to look at where is, it, where is the security trading? Is it only a recognized exchange? And then people can then offer this, this product um, on, onto the market. So these are what you have in terms of the, the rules. So if it's an index, it's either it could be listed here or it could be listed again outside the market. And or what is important is just to, uh, for people to understand is, is its, uh, its, its composition, uh, the benchmark that is being used and the person who's preparing those indices so that people have an appreciation so that when it is offered as a CFD, people are aware in terms of what exactly um, is is covered on that particular index, and people can verify that information uh, if they need to verify that verify that information. So I think the one which is obviously for all of us, which is the popular one, is obviously the current space where people are trading uh, different currencies, and then um, obviously there will be a reference point, and these things will be seen globally. Um, and, and there's no restriction in terms of the currencies that can be traded on the market. But uh, I think like Johnny said, they are going to um, indicate the currencies which are currently available and people can, within their platform, you can then choose uh, the current space that you think uh, you have a better appreciation, with better understanding and, 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 and we take it from there. So um that brings me to the it was a short presentation but because we provide an oversight and regulatory role um that's what we thought in terms of the framework this is important for people to share why it is important for uh, people to know the framework so i will hand over to sandra Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, Robert, for that presentation. Uh, I hope that um, we all had a chance to get an understanding of what uh, this instrument is all about. So I think at this moment in time, uh, let me just take this moment to thank Robert and Johnny for their presentation. Whilst I'm just checking in the chat box to confirm if there are any questions um, that uh, they've been posted in the chat box. In case you also have a question that you haven't had yet a chance to post it in the chat box, uh, this is the time for you to do so, as our presenters will be able to tackle these um, these questions. So I say the first one is for Johnny to say, uh, would you please recap how we calculate the stop loss value of my investment? Sorry, Sandra, can you repeat that, please? All right, thank you. Um, so Kudakwasha is saying, would you please recap on how we calculate stop loss value of my investment? So you decide how much you want to lose. So for example, if you want to lose 10% of your equity and you're not using any leverage or any margin, the 10%, you calculate it straightforward as 10%. So going back to the example we provided, if you have ten thousand, uh, if you have one thousand dollars in equity, if you want to lose ten percent, or the maximum amount you want to lose is ten percent, that means you can only lose one hundred dollars. Okay. Now, if you're losing one to ten leverage, okay, you can you're still only available to lose, or you can only lose one hundred dollars. But since you are using leverage, your balance or your your balance or your capital is now ten thousand dollars. So 
to one hundred dollar out of ten thousand dollars is one percent. So a one percent change in price. This is how much or where you should put your stop loss. Okay. Any additional questions I didn't get to answer? All right. So thank the you lot very size, much. We didn't cover the lot sizes. The lot sizes usually for currencies is a one one hundred thousand units per currency. Uh, it's uh, 1,000 1, 1, ounce for gold, 10,000 for silver. And for those, those additional information, guys, please reach out to the team that we have or attend the event that we're having in Crystal Lodge. It's going to be a very interesting. You get to meet the team. You get all the clarification in, in person. Okay. Uh, Zalila, I don't think we have Zim assets. On as CFDs on the VCG platform, we only have the international ones, and maybe we can add those later on. And for the minimum deposit, again, please reach out to the team. Uh, they can have more information there on how much. And yes, you can use credit cards. That's for sure. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yes, you can trade foreign stocks. You can trade stocks. You can trade international stocks, you can trade international currencies, approximately all currencies that are liquid and available. Uh, all the indices, all the major indices in the world, you can trade up to uh, more than 100 cryptocurrency. So you have more than 500 products that you can actually trade. These are the most tradable in the world. They can include stock, cryptocurrencies, commodities, oil, uh, gold, silver, and all of these. Okay. So I provided the contact details. Again, these are the contact details. I'm gonna share them with you guys. This is their numbers. I'm gonna provide also the emails real quick before I go. So you can, this is the email of Emmanuel. And this is the email of uh, Donnie. Okay. If you have more questions about the local market, I encourage you to reach out to the team. The team is very friendly and they are there to help you out. Okay. And concerning also the Cresta Lodge event, please do reach out to the team. Uh, they have all of the information. Unfortunately, I do not have it. Concerning the app, we will soon, hopefully in a couple of months, we will have our own app where you can go and trade on it. It's under development. Okay. Uh, the technical terms about the processes in the market, these are not with me. Okay? I'm just the head of learning and empowerment. Uh, the operation aspect, please reach out to the team for them. Okay? It was a great uh, being with you guys. Sandra? All right, th thank you very much. I'm also seeing there's another question in the chat box. They are asking, um, when is the platform going live? The platform is already live. The initial or the official launch is going to be on Monday. So make sure to follow up with the team, attend our event at the Crystal Lodge, and we'll get all of the necessary information that we, could not, we couldn't cover today there. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Johnny. Perhaps the last question. Um, there's someone who's saying that, is there an independent uh, independent market maker or sure, a liquidity course, yeah. provider? Of course, of course. So we have our liquidity providers. We're not money makers. We are brokers and we settle our transactions with international banks, but I cannot disclose the information which banks because this is classified, but we do have our liquidity providers that we settle with. Anyone that do not have a liquidity provider, you should be afraid of them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Peps, uh, this one is the last one. Uh, could I think do you trade synthetic indices? You mean synthetic indices, the ones that we, we create them out of derivatives? Yes. Uh, you can trade the direct indices. You don't need to create them synthetically. Okay. All right. Uh, if you want, I... 
Let yes, me share ahead. with you the image of the event. I'll put it in the chat so people can also check it out. If, if that's okay with you, Sandra. So people can register, go on the go on the uh, QR code and register there. Okay, just give me one moment. Or perhaps, Jenny, we can circulate uh, to the mailing list after after this uh, after this webinar yeah. if you are not able to find it. No, no, it's here. I already shared it. Okay. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. Perfect. I can share it through email. You can share it, Sandra, uh, later on. All okay. right. No, that's fine. Okay. Thank you so much, Sandra. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Okay, thank you once again um, for attending this this webinar. Let me uh, take this moment to appreciate the presenters that we had today. Thank you so much, Johnny, for setting time aside to come and educate us. We hope that um, you will be available, any member of your team will be available in the future for more, for more engagements. As you can see, it was a very interactive dis uh, discussion and there were a lot of questions that came up. Thank you so much for coming in today. Uh, thank you also to Robert Mbayo for clarifying in terms of the role that um, VFX uh, plays in these CFDs. Um, thank you so much, Robert, for coming. Uh, we also hope that there will be more of those webinars that will be arranged uh, going forward. And also to say thank you to everyone that attended. Uh, I think it's, the webinar was a success because of the people that attended today. And also to thank all those that were participating today. Thank you very much for for your active participation in the discussion today. So uh, without wasting much of your time, I think we have come to the end of this discussion. Do enjoy the rest of your day and, and enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much. Thank you.